Hello, gents. Welcome to our video on Chapter 6, The Wave Nature of Light, or Wave and Their Properties. So the far first section is called The Wave Nature of Light. And many of you guys have already studied waves before and know a few of their properties. So um, fill in what you don't know here. We see and we talk about mostly when we say the word light, we're talking about visible light, mostly in our everyday conversations. But that's what we see. We see visible light, but light is only a small part of a very large spectrum. That spectrum is called the electromagnetic radiation spectrum. I'll abbreviate it as EMR from here on out. Now, here are some of the parts of the spectrum. The gamma rays, x-rays, UV rays, visible light, infrared, microwaves, and radio waves. Now, all of our electromagnetic radiation share one fund fundamental characteristic. They all travel at the speed of light, which is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. It's given the variable C. And all EMR have wave-like properties, meaning they have a wavelength, which is the distance from crest to crest or node to node of a wave, and they have frequency. The frequency is the amount of cycles uh, or waves per second that pass a certain point. So amount of waves per second, really. So frequency is noted by F, or for our sake, it's going to be Greek letter here. And wavelength given by lambda. Now, speed, wavelength, and frequency can be related by this equation. C equals wavelength times the frequency. In order to keep C constant, meaning all speed of light travels at this speed, it does not change. In order to keep that C constant, wavelength and frequency, frequency have to be inversely proportional, meaning as one increases, the other decreases. So as wavelength, as we go from gamma rays to radio waves, our wavelength increases. Wavelength increases. At that same time, our frequency decreases. So going this way, frequency decreases. Going this way, frequency increases. So we increase in frequency this way, and increase in wavelength that way. If they're going the same way, they're opposites. Wavelength measured generally in uh, meters or nanometers or picometers or micrometers depending on how small or large the wavelength are. Frequency generally measured in hertz, hz, which is, you know, waves per second, so one over seconds. Now, 6.2 touches on the fact that waves are not only seen as just having wavelength and frequency, meaning light isn't only defined in terms of a wavelength and frequency. You can define it in other ways. So 6.2 talks about quantized energy and photons. There's a scientist by the name of Max Planck who hypothesized that energy from your electromagnetic radiation can be absorbed and released by atoms, but only in discrete packets of some minimal size. And that minimum size is where we get the word quantum from. Quantum means a fixed amount. So a fixed amount of energy is the name given to the smallest quantity of energy that can be emitted or absorbed as EMR. That's a quantum. A quantum is the smallest amount of energy that can be emitted or absorbed. The smallest amount. And we've already seen this in our flame test. You put a certain substance, atom, in fire. It absorbed energy, then released energy in a specific amount. That amount were, was a quantum. We can calculate this energy using this equation. This energy, quantum energy, is equal to H, which is Planck's constant, times our frequency. E is the energy of a single quantum. H, Planck's constant, which is that number here. And here we have frequency. So one Planck's constant times frequency equals one quantum. 
We have two of that. It's two quantum. Now, Albert Einstein used this theory, used this hypothesis to predict something different, something called the photoelectric effect. And what that is, is something that highlighted what I was talking about before, how we view light. So the photoelectric effect was essentially an experiment that shines light on a metal surface. So you shine light on a metal surface, and you detect what happens around that metal surface. And it was detected that electrons were emitted from the metal. So light shined on the metal, electrons came off of the metal. So what that said about light was maybe light didn't just contain, you know, wasn't, maybe it just wasn't a wave with frequency and wavelength. It did have that. But maybe light actually was a particle. And through many experiments, that's what Einstein came up with. The dual nature of light or the duality of light. That light can act as a wave and have frequency and wavelength. Light can also act as a particle and collide with other things as it collided with this metal. So the radiant energy from the light acted as a stream of tiny particles called photons. Photons are those little packets or quanta of energy. So the energy of a photon, just like the energy of a quantum, is given by the same equation. Now, using this, Bohr stood on the shoulders of both Planck and Einstein to do his, you know, his physics, his quantum physics. But he took it to a different level. He related it more to the atom. So he looked at line spectra. And from that, we got this, you know, Bohr model that he proposed. So a line spectrum is a spectrum containing radiation of only specific wavelength. It's very specific. So if we look at hydrogen. Our hydrogen line spectrum here. So this is a hydrogen atom. It has its one electron here and energy level one. When Bohr put energy into this atom, that atom went to a higher energy level. That was at its excited state up here. But this excited state, as we've talked about before, was unstable. So the electron came back down. It absorbed energy. This is an atom absorbing energy as Planck hypothesized. And then it released it. When it released that energy, and that electron went back down to the ground state, it released electromagnetic radiation in the form of light. This light had a certain wavelength. And having a certain wavelength, that means it had a certain frequency. And because it's light, it traveled at the speed of light. Given that it had a frequency, it must also have an energy associated with it. So that ties together this equation with the one from our first board. The speed of light equals frequency times the wavelength. So that's what Niels Bohr observed. But one of his major takeaways was this. Since electrons came back down to their ground state. So they came back down to their original energy level, our principal energy level. This gives evidence that electrons were organized in a very specific way. Electrons are arranged according to their quantum numbers, arranged in principal energy levels, sublevels, orbitals, and those are all overlapping in a very complex manner. Gentlemen, please take notes. Adios.